The second part of the chapter of Vedic age is the later Vedic age. Let's see the subheadings in the next slide. The subheadings of the later Vedic age are sources to reconstruct the later Vedic age, spread of Vedic civilization, role of iron in later Vedic economy, comparative study of early and later Vedic society, a brief comparison of their political organization, comparative study of early and later Vedic economic life, a brief comparison of their religious life, the epics. You have read in the previous chapter that early Vedic age ended around 1000 BC. The next 500 years may be described as the later Vedic period. The use of iron along with other metals facilitated the growth of Aryan civilization. The later Vedic period shows all-round development among the Aryans. Sources to reconstruct the later Vedic age. Later Vedic literature. The later Vedic literature included Yajur Veda, Adharva Veda, Sama Veda. Each of the Vedas consists of two parts, the Samhita and Brahmana. The Samhita is comprised of hymns and prayers to be sung at rituals and sacrifices. The Brahmanas are the prose texts that explain in detail the meaning of hymns. Besides, there are Aranyakas, forest texts and the Upanishads which contain the philosophical thoughts of learned sages on soul, God and ultimate truth or reality, Smritis and epics. Many other literary productions were handed down in the course of many centuries. Some of these are Smritis and the two great epics, the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. Archaeological sources. The archaeological sources include the axes made of iron and other iron tools. The later Vedic people were familiar with four types of pottery, the black and red ware, black slipped ware, painted grey ware and red ware. Spread of Vedic civilization to many regions in India. As population increased, the Aryans moved along the course of rivers Ganga and Yamuna. The scene shifted from Punjab to the land of Kurus, which were region round modern Delhi. Further, they occupied vast regions to east, such as Kosala, East Uttar Pradesh, Kashi, Varanasi, Videha, North Bihar, and Magadha, South Bihar. The name Vangas Bengal occurs in the one of the Aranyaka's forest texts. The Atreya Brahmana mentioned in Andhras, who is the modern times, are Telugu-speaking people of southern India. Thus, the territories occupied by later Vedic Aryans comprise the whole of India to north of the Narmada and some regions even to the south of that river. Role of iron in later Vedic economy. Access made of iron made it easier to fell trees and clear forests. That made more and more land available both for cultivation and colonization. Iron plowshares made deep plowing easy. It helped the peasants to produce varied crops. Carpenters, masons and metal workers started working with better iron tools. This gave rise to development of different crafts. Increased agriculture productivity led to the growth of trade and commerce. This gave a momentum to the rise of towns and cities. The evidence to suggest that southern India had also become familiar with iron. Megalithic monuments such as dolmens and cromlechs have been found all over South India. The word megalith means large stone. It is divided into mega plus lith. A dolmen or a cromlech is a megalithic tomb with a large flat stone laid on upright ones. Iron tools, arrows and fragments of rice and other grains have been found besides the skeletons of persons buried in these graves. This is enough to show that transition from copper and bronze age culture to the iron age. Comparative study of early and later Vedic society. Many changes can be traced in the social life of later Vedic Aryans. Position of women. In early Vedic society, women were treated as being equal with them. Women could attend assemblies, they took part in all religious rites, they could offer sacrifices along with their husbands. In the later Vedic age, women were generally given a lower position. Although women continued to be associated with all religious rites, the rules of marriage underwent a chain. If monogamy was ideal, polygamy was the practice, at least in higher sections of society. In polygamous system, a woman naturally assumes subordinate position. The practice of widows marrying again, which was fairly common in the Rig Vedic age, was now regarded with disfavor. But the education with which some women received was of high order. The discourses of women philosophers are preserved in the Upanishads. 
caste system. The later Vedic society was also divided into four Varnas, but the growing cult of sacrifices added much to the power of Brahmins. Now the Brahmins and the Kshatriyas enjoyed powers and privileges denied to Vaishyas and the Shudras. Moreover, many other caste groups besides the four major Varnas had come into being. In the words of R. C. Majumdar, we have references to the merchant, the chariot maker, the smith, the carpenter, the tanner, the fishermen, etc. as the names of distinct castes. In the later Vedic age, the membership of Varnas or that of caste had become hereditary. There was also a fixation of occupations on the basis of one's caste. The position of Shudras was made miserable by depriving them of rights of learning the sacred texts and performing sacrifices. The so-called untouchables were forced to live in separate settlements outside the village or the town boundaries. The four ashrams or stages of life. The man's life was divided into four periods of 25 years each. Each period represented one ashram. The Brahmacharya ashram was mainly devoted to education for development of body and mind. The Grihastha ashram was the period when man married and led a family life. The Vanaprastha ashram was spent in meditation and prayer. The last phase was Sannyasa ashram. One had to renounce all worldly pleasures and live in the forest as Sannyasi. Gurukul system of education. The Gurukul system of education had become well established in later Vedic times. The pupils stayed with their gurus for their physical, mental and spiritual development. Besides Vedic literature, secular subjects like logic, ethics, military science, mathematics, law, astronomy and astrology were included in the courses of study. No fees was charged for this type of education but the pupils paid a voluntary contribution known as Guru Dakshina when they completed their education. Children belonging to both rich and poor families had to stay together. They rendered various duties in running of the Gurukula. They gathered fuel, tended the cattle, begged arms from neighboring villages and worked in the fields attached to the Gurukula. A brief comparison of their political organization. The later Vedic period saw many changes in the political organization. We could see the emergence of Janapadas or large kingdoms ruled by the kings whose powers had grown enormously. Administrative system. The emergence of large kingdoms was associated with growth of administrative machinery. The most important officials were the treasurer, the collector of taxes, the royal chamberlain who managed the household of monarch, and of course the older officials of Rig Vedic age, the Purohit, royal chaplain, the Sainani, the general, and the Gramini, the leader of the village. Mention is also made of a Sachiva. In later ages, the Sachivas rose to the level of ministers. The Sabha was gradually converted into king's court. The Rajasuya and other sacrifices. Sacrifices such as Rajasuya, the Vajpaya and Ashwamedha were unknown in Rig Vedic age. In the later Vedic age, Vajpaya sacrifice was performed by new king at the time of his coronation. The Rajasuya sacrifice was performed to appease gods in order to ensure the material well-being of kingdom. The Ashwamedha sacrifice was an occasion for powerful king to proclaim that he was a king of kings. Comparative study of early and later Vedic economic life, growing importance of agriculture. In addition to yava or barley, a new crop, brihi or rice had assumed greater significance. The later Vedic Aryans produced many other crops such as wheat, millet and sugarcane. Crafts and occupations. There were a remarkable variety of crafts in later Vedic age. Perhaps the most significant change was the use of iron in large quantities. Crafts such as leather working, carpentry making or jewelry and manufacture of glass flourished. Craft specialization had now become more common than in early Vedic period. Thus chariot making developed as an occupation different from that of carpentry. Trade and industry. Important changes can be seen in the field of trade and commerce. Commerce was made easier by use of such units of value as Niksha and Satamana, although it cannot be said with certainty that they had developed as regular coins. The reference to ships indicate a flourishing inland maritime trade. Many of the professions were organized into guilds which controlled prices and ensured the quality of goods. A brief comparison of their religious life. Significant changes took place in the religion of Aryans of later Vedic period. 
gods and goddesses the rig vedic gods indra agni surya etc lost their prominence new gods brahma vishnu and shiva gained prominence they believe that prajapati or brahma was the creator vishnu the preserver helped men and gods in their distress shiva was regarded as mahadev the great god rama and krishna who were the incarnations of lord vishnu became popular deities during the epic period durga kali lakshmi and parvati emerged as important female deities of people rituals and sacrifices of later vedic period in later vedic period the simple religious practices became complicated and ritualistic sacrifice became the most important part of their religion the ceremonies could be performed only by brahmins who were given prominent positions in the society many superstitious beliefs in the spirits spells and charms became part of their religion practice of tapasya or penance occupied an important place in the religion they believed in the principles of karma action and moksha salvation philosophy of the upanishads towards the end of the later vedic phase a new trend is visible the upanishads do not deal with rituals or sacrifices they deal with higher knowledge and explain the relation between jiva individual soul and brahma supreme soul or god a major concept of upanishads is the essential unity of all religions of all spiritual paths a comparative study of the early rig vedic and later vedic age is shown in the table below there are few points which point to the comparison between early vedic age and later vedic age like society political life economic life and religious life so first two topics are discussed here society and political life In this slide we'll see the continuation of the above table a comparative study of the early rig vedic and later vedic ages so the points discussed here are economic life and religious life the epics the most famous literary works of the later vedic period were the two great epics the ramayana and the mahabharata let's see ramayana the ramayana is believed to be the work of sage valmiki The central theme of the story is of Rama and Sita. Rama was the eldest son of King Dasharatha who ruled over Kaushala with Ayodhya as capital. The king wanted to appoint his eldest son Rama as Yuvaraja but he was opposed by his second wife Queen Kaikeyi. The king had promised her two boons so she demanded that he gave the throne to her son Bharata and sent Rama into exile for 14 years. In the course of wanderings in the forest Rama reached the territory near Godavari in the province called Janastana there in the colony of Rakshasas who had connections with the kingdom of Sri Lanka Rama came to the rescue of munis living in the region and killed number of rakshasa to take revenge on Rama Ravana the non Aryan ruler of Lanka abducted Sita and took her into the capital Rama fought against Ravana killed him and rescued sita rama returned to ayodhya and his coronation was celebrated with great rejoicing all over the kingdom the mahabharata the mahabharata is believed to be the work of veda vyasa the main story is about the conflict between the pandavas and kauravas and the battle at kurukshetra which involved many aryan kings of the period Kauravas always jealous of Pandavas invite Pandavas for a game of dice Pandavas lose everything and are sent to exile After exile period Duryodhana refuses to give the kingdom back and this results in the great war of Kurukshetra where Pandavas win the battle and take back their kingdom Message of the Bhagavad Gita Arjuna had refused to fight against his own relatives but Lord Krishna who was his charioteer gave him the divine message of true dharma which was contained in Bhagavad Gita your concern says the gita is the solely with action not its fruit action in its own reward in the battle that lasted for 18 days all the kaurava brothers were killed yudhishthira became the king of hastinapur the importance of epics The epics serve as the main source of information about the political institutions and social 
and the cultural organization of information about the various Aryan kingdoms, about their armies and the weapons they used during the period. The Kshatriyas believed that death on the battlefield was the noblest act in the life of warriors. The epics are acclaimed for their literary and philosophical value. They reveal the high ideals of family life of Aryans. The great heroes depicted in the epics as the embodiment of high moral principles made a great impact on successive generations. The Bhagavad Gita, which forms a part of Mahabharata, is one of the most popular religious texts considered sacred by people of India. The interest of self might conflict with duty. Whenever there is such a conflict, the Gita does give the answer. That is the secret of undying popularity of this religious text. It teaches that soul is immortal.